you know, the last thing I want this channel to turn into is the Mega Man channel. <laughs> But, um, I guess I've been playing a lot of Mega Man, so uh, I decided to revisit yet another game I had as a kid. This is Mega Man for the Game Boy, also known as Rockman World in Japan, or, on our side of the ocean, Mega Man in Dr. Wily's Revenge, or, as the title screen puts it, just Mega Man. Yeah, for some reason, this game has like a dozen different names, I don't really know. Uh, why they couldn't just settle on Mega Man World or something, but yeah. The Game Boy Mega Man games, this is the only Game Boy Mega Man I had back in the day, and I wrote it off as kind of underpowered and watered down compared to the NES games, and really, if I had a choice between Game Boy Mega Man and NES Mega Man, I would take NES Mega Man, but uh, Game Boy Mega Man is uh, really not that bad a collection of games. There's five of them in total. And they were actually not developed in-house by Capcom, and in case you're wondering why I'm uh, waiting on the title screen here, this music, it goes on for so long and yet all you have to do is push the start button to get to stage select. It's amazing, it, it goes on for so long. And the stage select theme and the password themes are like that too, so I'm eventually going to listen to them in full at some point. Uh, anyways, these are not straight ports of the NES Mega Man games. For some weird reason, this first iteration of Mega Man on the Game Boy, it has uh, the four of the Robot Masters from Mega Man 1 at stage select. Guts Man and Bomb Man were for some reason not included. I guess they ran out of cartridge space. So yeah, uh, really unfortunate to see my man Guts Man gone, but whatever, we'll just start with Cut Man. And a thing about the uh, the Game Boy Mega Man games is that, well, this Game Boy Mega Man is actually really, really hard. I'm starting on Cutman stage, the hardest of the four in my opinion, to get it out of the way. It's got this new enemy called the Saw Blade. These are really annoying. They can be standing in place on these conveyor belts. They can be bouncing around like mad and are seriously hard to avoid, and they do a lot of damage too. Uh, the cool thing about Game Boy Mega Man is it, it doesn't strictly port uh, NES Mega Man. It uses a lot of enemies and bosses, but it will also invent new enemies and new bosses and give old bosses new tricks. Or in this case, fix the uh, Mega Man 1 bosses so that they're not nearly as unfair. I think the Game Boy Mega Man bosses for this for this game, they are uh, fairly decent. They're very fair fights, but they're still hard. So yeah. Oh yeah, and this enemy right here is the main reason I dislike Cutman stage so much, because they're very, very diff difficult to avoid, because they get combined with not only the conveyor belts, but they get combined with the saw blades as well, and I was just doing so well with the slick movement here. Um, also, you've got big eyes. They're even more annoying now, because they cannot be damaged unless they are in the air, so it's very, very hard to fight with them. Unless you just uh, get lucky, they jump very high, and then you end up walking under them, and I just died. Yeah. Luckily, the checkpoint is not that far behind, but uh, very frequently in Game Boy Mega Man, the checkpoints are very, very spare. Um, this checkpoint is actually fairly early on in Cutman stage. I was stuck on Cutman as a kid for a very long time until I just used a password to get past him. Anyways, I have to repeat some of that uh, stuff I just did. Unfortunately, I got hit this time, so it's not uh, nearly as good looking as it was before. And I'm probably going to get hit by the big guy because he decided to jump low instead of high, unfortunately. Luckily, once you start collecting weapons, this gets a whole lot easier. Um, this was made before Mega Man 3, so you do not have sliding or charge shots, unfortunately. And you don't have rush either, but there is one utility that we will get. It's not even the magnet beam, so that's nice. Uh, very kind of them to not make Sniper Joe do a whole lot of damage with his buster. And I hesitated there, you should not hesitate when you run down that hallway. Just keep running and you will just clip through all of the clippers, I guess. <laughs> Ah, uh, I should not be making cut puns or cut man is going to kill me for it. Anyways, reminding ourselves that rock is supposed to beat scissors. <laughs> uh, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, I swear. Cut man is, uh, he can be difficult to get used to. You want to stay as far away from him as possible so that the, uh, when he fires the scissors from his head, they have a long way to go. If he does it very close to the edge of the room, then there will not be a lot of time to avoid getting hit by them. So, ideally, you want to be on whichever side of him is further away from the, uh, closer to the wall. 
or further away from the wall. I don't know, just watch that fight a dozen times and you'll get it. Very exciting though, I ended it with only one health and zero extra lives, so that was um, kind of exciting. Except for the fact that I wouldn't have uploaded this if you if I hadn't won there anyways, because then I would have edited it out. Moving on to Iceman. Iceman is a very annoying stage in this game. The developers did not get the ice physics absolutely accurate to how they are in the NES. So, jumping around on platforms can be very annoying, and you've got these annoying B-Bladers. These are called B-Bladers, aren't they? Or am I thinking of a Mega Man X enemy? And I've just dropped into an enemy... Uh, yeah. Fortunately, there's a large energy right there, so I guess they thought uh, maybe we should put one there just in case somebody took a little bit too much damage. And you just saw why this game annoys me somewhat. It's because it's very hard to tell if you are on the edge of the platform, and it is also hard to tell how much further you can go before uh, having to jump in order to avoid falling, and I underestimated, um, well, I overestimated my jumping ability, and I went straight into the spikes. But oh well. Uh, it wasn't that far into the level, we can always just try again. So yeah, um, one constant annoyance in Game Boy Mega Man is that since the screen size is so small, um, well, it's smaller than the NES screen size, so that means that Mega Man is going to be much bigger, and the enemies are going to be much bigger in relation to the environments. And um, that's a problem with Mega Man 7 as well. Um, because Mega Man sprite is so big in these games in relation to the environment, it can be very difficult to tell like how far you can go before you have to jump. I had to really get onto the edge of that platform. And edge jumps, uh, they're every bit as annoying as they were in the NES games as well. So I wish they didn't make as many uh, edge jumps, but the Game Boy games do do creative things like this. You wouldn't see a puzzle like this in NES Iceman stage, you would instead see disappearing bricks. So it's good that they got creative and did something other than disappearing bricks for these little puzzle rooms. I did this uh, incorrectly, you're supposed to wait for that icicle to fall before you move on, because then you have the height to make that jump. And with this big eye, thankfully you can just run forwards and be completely safe from him, because regardless of whether he does a small jump or a big jump, you'll make it anyways. I haven't talked about weapons yet, so I might as well do that now. This is the Rolling Cutter. Uh, like in NES Mega Man, it has very small range, but it's got a lot of attack power because it can do a lot of hits in the amount of time that it's out, because it will be overlapping the enemy's hitbox for so long if you place it correctly. So yeah. The game's kind of going faster than I can talk through it. Uh, I should also mention that the uh, Game Boy Mega Man games were not developed by Capcom in-house. They were actually developed, uh, they were actually outsourced to another company. Now, Game Boy Mega Man's 1, 3, 4, and 5 were all done by the same company that was outsourced to. Mega Man 2 on the Game Boy was done by somebody different, and it shows, but more on that later. Uh, this is Iceman. They have uh, basically taken the NES version of the fight and removed the middle icicle, which makes it very much easier to dodge. These still do a lot of damage, but a really cool thing... Cool, Iceman. Uh, yeah, I, I just can't avoid doing that. A really cool thing is that you can actually use the ice physics to your advantage because you can jump forward, start moving back towards the wall, and then while you are sliding in one direction, just shoot in the other. It's actually really nice. Nice like ice. I just can't avoid these ice puns. Ice Slasher is every bit as good as its NES incarnation, so that's good to know too. Moving on to Electman stage. Electman is the stage that I think a lot of players would select first for this game because it, uh, well, it's actually the recommended stage in a lot of situations because um, we have disappearing bricks. A lot of obstacles in Electman stage do not involve weapon use, they don't involve shooting at things. It's just platforming, so this is a good start to get your platforming on. Which, uh, you know, I prefer the challenges based on enemies and shooting at things instead of just these disappearing brick puzzles that you just have to memorize the combination to. And you have annoying jumps that you have to make like that sometimes. How was I supposed to know that the block was going to appear directly above me? Well, I guess you you would have to like watch the, uh, the platforms from safety and then make your jumps after you to uh, narrow down what you have to do. But this is still annoying, because, like, at least you can kind of jump out of it if you're really good at making an edge jump like that. It's something you can do, anyways. 
Alright, so moving on, we have disappearing bricks combined with, an, with a fan blowing you away. And you have to make some very well-timed jumps in order to get past it. This is... And now we finally have some enemies that we can shoot at with our weapons that we collected. You know, that's, that's just the thing. Um, in this game, I actually was using the weapons quite a lot, but there are a lot of weapons in, like, a lot of situations in Game Boy Mega Man where, you know, it just feels like the weapons aren't as useful in Game Boy Mega Man as they are in NES Mega Man because there aren't a lot of situations that allow you to use the weapons. And, of course, we have the platform guy from Airman stage for some reason because this was before Mega Man 3 but after 2. So yeah, they're not difficult to get past, you just have to wait for the platforms, and yeah. Definitely not a game that follows modern level design conventions, but it, it's such an old game, so I guess it's going to show its age a little bit. I, I'm ragging on this game a lot, but I do appreciate that it does some creative stuff that you wouldn't see in the NES games. And the music is not a bad rendition of the NES themes as well, and there's some original music in the Game Boy games as well, so look forward to that. That's stuff that you look forward to. This isn't a bad game overall, I just think it's old and doesn't stack up the NES game as well, but I'm still playing it, I'm still gonna see this through the end because I did have this as a kid and it's nice to revisit it. And see where the series went with the future installments. And yeah, they decided to put an electric trap in front of the fan like that, and we finally have some Metors. Uh, not difficult to take those down. And we have a room with disappearing bricks and a bunch of Susies. I have no idea why they're called Susies. And I don't know why I walked into that one either, I guess I thought it was going to explode quicker than that. Oh well. Let's see, I haven't used Ice Slasher a whole lot in this stage, uh, and oh, we have this setup as well, direct from the NES games, no doubt. I haven't used Ice Slasher a lot yet, I guess I haven't run into one of those big eyes, so I don't really see a need to freeze these enemies, since they die pretty quickly to rolling cutter anyways. And up here we have a repeat of the room from two screens prior, yeah. And also a lot of wasted space on the right, and I'm just, like, taking every opportunity I can to crap on this game. I shouldn't do that. Anyways, you saw that uh, Ice Slasher, very good for freezing the big eyes. You can just freeze them and then either walk under them or destroy them with your other weapons. So, I decided to fight all of the first four Robot Masters with only the Buster. I can't do that with the latter four, and spoiler alert, there's four more waiting for us. I can't do it for the latter four because of stuff that I will get into later, but for now I'm just going to use the Buster only, and the reason for that is, there may not be a charge shot in Ga uh, Game Boy Mega Man, at least not in one or two, but I still think it's very possible to fight these guys with only the Buster, it's a lot more fair. And uh, for Elect Man, it's mostly because he, f for some reason, refuses to fire his Elect Beam any more than that initial volley. And it looks like he tried to fire it, but failed to do so. I'm not sure what the deal was there. But, yeah, because of how much he jumps around, how much you can force him to jump around, he'll jump when you shoot. It's very easy to uh, output more damage on him than he can to you, so that's nice. So we've got three Robot Masters down, we've got the Thunder Beam, which is very standard fare, same as its NES counterpart. Last but not least is Fireman, which is a fairly difficult stage, not as much as Cutman though. Especially if you come in with the Ice Slasher, because the Ice Slasher is still going to be very useful in Fireman stage, go figure. Ice against fire, what do you know? Alright, so it looks like I'm going to use the Thunder Beam here. It goes in three directions, just like its NES counterpart, and it's very useful in several of these rooms. Now, um, this is the main annoyance of Fireman Stage, these fireballs raining from the ceiling. Uh, there's not much you can do to, um... Well, I guess you could just time a jump really well like I was doing, but... If you want to use the Ice Slasher to maybe freeze one of them so that they don't respawn, that's difficult to freeze them in a location where you will not still, like, crash into them and get hit. Like in this room here, I thought maybe I could hang from the ladder and freeze them when they're, like, out of the area where they can hit me, but I still got hit here. So, yeah, that room in particular, I think that's one room where you just have to take the hit. I've never gotten through that without damage, I don't think. 
So we have Fire Pots from Mega Man 2. I think that's what they're called. There's actually an enemy role at the end of the game where they tell you the names of all the enemies. And some of them are just weird, as expected. I mean, you've just got to come up with something to name the enemy because it doesn't really matter what they're called, right? Anyways, um... So we have a Sniper Joe. They're very easy to take out with Cutman's weapon. And in this room, we're going to freeze one of those fire pillars because that's how you get up to that little power-up. And that's a nice way to, um... I guess it's a nice way to hint at the fact that you can freeze those, but there's really nowhere else in the stage where freezing the fire pillar like that is useful at all. You can't really disable the trap because you might freeze it in a position where you can't get past it anyways, or it's a more a hindrance than anything else. So that's the one spot where you can freeze a fire pillar and have it be good. Also, don't whiff on any of these jumps, especially not this last one coming up, where, um... You don't die instantly if you touch the lava, which is uh, a little strange, but I I'm glad it's not like Mega Man 1 on the NES, believe me. So this is a weird little trap that only appears in this stage. You can freeze it, and you don't need to freeze this one because you could just uh, run forward when you're going, since you're going with the grain and all of that. And uh, we'll just uh, cut this guy up. I've always enjoyed ice sculptures. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to pull a line from the Mega Man cartoon, but I was freezing something and then cutting it up, so I figured I should. That's probably not even a very uh, well-known line. I think most of Cut Man's other lines are much more well-known. So, moving on from the filler talk, we are now fighting Fireman, and this fight is honestly a complete joke. I get hit here one time, but then never again, because look at this. This is all Fireman does. And that's really, really unfortunate. What were they doing with this one? This is the one boss that is far too easy because of how rigid the pattern is. Okay, so now we've got all of the weapons, we've beaten all the bosses, and we actually do get an extra reward on top of that. For defeating all four Robot Masters, you get the carry item, which is the only utility you can find in this game. It is not strictly a copy of uh, item 1 from Mega Man 2 because it stays in place, but when you fire it, it appears beneath you automatically. So that's actually really helpful. The upcoming Wily stage actually has some areas designed around the carry item being that way, so that's very nice. And I'm just sitting at the password screen because I've never listened to the full song. And for anybody who wants to skip to this part, you can now write down the password. A2, A3, C2, C3, B4. <laughs> Alright, so there's only four main stages and two Wily stages, which probably sounds like not a whole lot, but um, the future Mega Man Game Boy games all have eight stages before, I think, a singular Wily stage. Yeah, there's just not as much on a Game Boy cartridge as there is on an NES cartridge. Uh, a lot of Game Boy ports have that problem where they can't really offer as much or not, uh, they can't offer as sleek gameplay as the NES had because of the hardware limitations. Uh, games shine when they are designed with their hardware limitations in mind. That's my opinion. And I've completely messed up the flying saucer noise because this is a uh, single sound channel, or converted to single sound channel, so oops. So this Wily Castle actually has that little exhaust pipe on the right. That's interesting that they kept it that way. Alright, so I'm going to demonstrate the carry by collecting this extra life here. As you can see, when I fire it, it appears directly beneath me, stays up for a little bit, and I probably could have refilled all of my carry energy, but the stage just started. This stage is long. It's, you know, um, it's pretty long for a Wily stage because it's, the, it's one of two Wily stages. So it's long, it's got a lot of challenges, and to top it all off, there are actually five bosses at the end because they don't they don't exactly throw in the boss rematches, they do something different. I'll get to that when I get to that. But yeah, when you have lots of big eyes, lots of sniper joes, and lots of, unfortunately, the drills from Metal Man stage, they really should have passed on putting this in because this is just completely awful. Rolling Cutter makes it a lot easier, but it's still so slow to get through all of this. I apologize, but you're gonna have to 
sit through all of this. It does make it possible to farm weapon energy and life energy, but whatever. So I'm going to use the carry to get this weapon energy for some reason, and they have a lot of uh, falling spike corridors, or spike shafts I should say, but since you have the carry you can very easily save yourself from landing in the spikes and hopefully jump to safety. If you were too far to the right on that screen just now then you're probably dead regardless. Oh, and this is the Firestorm. It's not as good as its NES counterpart because as you just saw, the shield is not always around you. There's a chance for enemies to slip through the shield part of the weapon, and I'm just a sniper today. Look at how well placed these shots are. Anyways, um, Firestorm does not get used a whole lot, and uh, with only two stages to go, there's not a whole lot of chances for the rest of the weapons to get used a whole lot as well. So, uh, moving on, there's three weapon energy capsules, I guess, in case you needed some more carry. And I should have used the carry right there. And, uh, that one was completely inefficient. It's hard to tell where you need to be for the fan to affect you. Uh, anyways, moving on to a screen with nothing but the bird that drops eggs and more drills. Wow, I'm gonna have to reach for the commentary today, so, um... That was your day. Mine was pretty good. I'm still trucking along, doing whatever it is I'm doing, and, uh... You know, all this Mega Man has made me think I should make my own Mega Man-type game. I've certainly got enough experience to hopefully make a good one, and, uh, hopefully people will play it. So, uh... A lot of people play things that I make, and it kind of makes me salty sometimes, and... And, um, yeah. Are we at the end of this corridor yet so I can stop, like, being salty about things, personal stuff? And, uh, yeah, we're at the end. Good, thank goodness. And I think we are almost at the end of the stage, too. So, I wanted to get that extra life, but unfortunately I couldn't. And as we fall down this pit, we enter the room with not boss rematches, because I already told you there weren't boss rematches in Game Boy Mega Man. It is instead four bosses from Mega Man 2, which is really, really weird. They don't have their own stages or anything. It's just four main stages and then a Wily stage with a gauntlet against four Robot Masters from Mega Man 2. And um, you also get all of their weapons at this point as well. Which is also very strange. Very strange way to do it, but, you know, whatever, I'll take it. And, um, this is also where I start using boss weaknesses, because as I've said, you have to go through five boss battles without getting a game over. And if you get a game over, it's all the way back to the beginning of the stage. You lose the weapons you've gained, which is also really weird. So, I took on Flashman with the Ice Slasher, because that's his weakness in this version of the game. And now we're fighting Quickman, and I'm going to use the Time Stopper on him. I don't remember if I did this in my playthrough of Mega Man 2, but if you use the Time Stopper, it not only stops Quickman, it drains his health slowly. I guess he was going so fast that stopping would have been painful for him. Too much stopping at once, I guess? Well, anyways, we got the Quick Boomerang. It's exactly the same as it was in Mega Man 2, complete with its great ammo count. And we're going to take it against Bubble Man. Now, um, some of these bosses I might have had... I might have been able to defeat them with just the Buster. Like, probably I could have defeated Bubble Man with just the Buster because he's Bubble Man. Come on. There's not even a spiked ceiling. And this room actually has water physics in it. I don't think there are water physics anywhere else in the game, but you jump higher in this room in order to like, simulate the water, so that's very interesting. They coded water physics just for this one room. As I've demonstrated, you have to actually walk onto the teleporter instead of just automatically teleporting away. So we got the bubble lead. I've never used it anywhere except against Heat Man, who was the last of the four robot masters from Mega Man 2. So here we go. Uh, Heat Man, exactly the same as he was in Mega Man 2. Um, except for these fire pillars, they behave a little bit differently, I've noticed. They don't exactly rise up. There's actually an interesting little bug in this game. If you destroy a Robot Master while they have projectiles on the screen, the game has to wait for the projectiles to go away before it can play the victory music. 
Very noticeable with Heat Man. It also kind of happened with Fire Man, if you remember right. Oh, also, a bit of trivia for this uh, game. Nintendo Power thinks that Heat Man is not in this game, and, and there is, in fact, a rematch with Fire Man. It also thinks that Elect Beam is Bubble Man's weakness. That's not true. Bubble Man is immune to it. Right, so this last boss to cap off the first Wily stage is known as Enka. Enka being, I believe, a genre of music that originated in Japan. It goes with the music theme that Mega Man has. Rock and roll and all of that. So he can be a bit difficult to fight against because this pattern of his is very rigid. Um, don't worry about the little noise that it makes when you shoot at him. That just signifies that he's going to fire a bigger projectile. Because the idea with Enka is that he absorbs all of your shots to create a bigger projectile. But it doesn't really matter that much because you just jump over it either way. He's annoying because when he sticks out that spear, it actually it extends his hitbox. So there's a, not a lot of room for you to dodge most of his attacks. But if you get used to that pattern, you can defeat him easily enough and earn the Mirror Buster, which is the only weapon in the game that can hurt the final boss, so you have to save it for the final boss. And it's only available in this stage, so the Mirror Buster and Enka don't get a lot of time to shine. And we are now going into space, because the Game Boy Mega Mans really like going into space for some reason, and Dr. Wily has built a spaceship that looks like a giant popcorn maker. Nintendo Power's words, not mine. Anyways, um, I was gonna say something else. Oh yeah, that's music for that first Wily stage. It is an original song. It was remixed for Mega Man 10, where Enka also serves as the boss, along with two other robots from Game Boy Mega Man, in case you were wondering. Like, in case anyone played that stage in Mega Man 10 and wondered what the heck was up with it. Uh, it's all a throwback to Game Boy Mega Man, which is really cool. Uh, like, if nothing else, the Game Boy Mega Mans are an interesting bit of Mega Man history, even if uh, they use a lot of recycled content. And I should also say that Mega Man 5 is the exception to the whole recycled content thing, because it uses all original Robot Masters, which is also really cool. What's not cool is that this final Wily stage has not one, but two of these Heat Man style disappearing brick sections. This first one is nice and easy, and even if you fall, you can still use carry to potentially save yourself. But um, I, these still annoy me because they're not really like based on enemies or fighting, they're based on platforming, and I've always enjoyed the fighting more than the platforming and whatever puzzles they come up with. It's just a me thing. I don't think I can walk under the big eye here with the position I've frozen him in, so I just destroyed him. And we have yet another big eye, why not? This one you basically have to destroy, even if you freeze it. And in this next area, there's a third big eye, wow. They just threw three of them at me, and each one of them is easy as the last. Because <laughs> you just freeze them all. We have some saw blades. And, um, this song is also an original tune, it has not been remixed. Just thought I'd point that out. It really should get remixed, though, it's, um, pretty cool. Alright, so this is where things get annoying, because they use the, uh, trick where the disappearing brick appears above you. They do that quite a lot. And I have this timing down, so I know what to do to get past it. S uh, but, um, yeah. I, I really can't say anything. This is just me following the pattern of disappearing bricks. No enemies to potentially stand in your way. And uh, yeah, I just used the carry at the end there to make it a little easier. Here's a sniper Joe coming at me. And unfortunately, I did not destroy him in time and took a hit. Kind of low on energy, but thankfully I'm not that low on extra lives. And here comes the very difficult room. I'm going to use the time stopper here. Uh, unfortunately, all of the enemies, if you use the Time Stopper this way, then it's almost impossible to get past them without damage. Yeah. That's normally where I would use the Time Stopper, but now that I've died and used it, I can't use it now, so I have to get past that room the normal way. Really unfortunate that you can't switch off Time Stopper still. Yeah, you still have to, like, wait for it to get used up. If you use it, then you've lost it, basically. So you've got to make good use of that one-time use of the Time Stopper. And 
Look at this, respawning enemy problems. And for some reason, he didn't get frozen that time. The Ice Slasher just went through him completely, and I don't know why. I should really be using Ice Slasher a lot, even though those, um, those scissors, the flying scissors, they're immune to most other weapons, they can't be destroyed, but you can freeze them, so that's a thing you can do too, and I apologize for this, but we have to go through this entire disappearing brick segment all over again. This takes several minutes, and I'm so sorry, but you can see that I used carry very effectively there to save myself from potentially dying. So the carry is a very good item, and I wish they had kept it. Well, I don't know where they would have used it. I guess maybe they would have used it in uh, Mega Man 4 or something in place of the balloon, but I don't know. I'm fortunate to see all of these items just appear one time and then never get used again. And the Mirror Buster falls into that category as well. I mean, like, I wish I didn't have to save it for the final boss, but I can see it being kind of useful. It reflects shots, if you were wondering. Yeah, I should also mention that the company that developed this game also developed Wily Wars for the Genesis, which is a port of Mega Man's 1, 2, and 3 for the Genesis, but it also includes original content, three new stages with new bosses. So that's a cool thing. I should really check that out because I've never actually played those stages because I would have to go through Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 again, and I don't know what changes they made to uh, Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, but I suppose I should check that out at some point. These are very bad positions to be freezing the scissors in, by the way. Alright, so we're almost to the end. I'm taking more damage than I should. I'm probably going to have to lose a life to the boss. I don't want to lose any more lives because then it will send me back to the disappearing bricks. Because this, they go so long without a checkpoint and now I'm in some real danger. <laughs> One health. <laughs> oh boy. Just have to slowly inch past this trap, and then I have to go up here. I'm actually going to use Firestorm in order to destroy the bird enemy before it can appear and drop the egg. Man, oh man. I should be close to the end, however. Oh, here we have blocks that can only be destroyed by a fully charged atomic fire. So that's this is the one time you're going to see atomic fire used to destroy those blocks. I'm not even sure why those blocks are there. It's basically asking you to try out all of your different weapons just to see what works. So if you jump up here, there's going to be more blocks that you have to use atomic fire to destroy. I remember this passage being a bit dangerous, and boy, this stage really has gone on for a long time, hasn't it? Jeez. There's some weapon energy here, and more weapon energy, a trap, and... You're going to want the carry here because this is another one of those shafts potentially full of spikes. So yeah, use the carry to save yourself, definitely. And I saved myself from landing on that enemy as well. Also good. Carry is a pretty nice item. I like having it. Okay, please give me some health here. Alright, you gave me a little bit of health. That's alright. I believe this is the last hallway before the final boss. And I just remembered that I lied. You're actually going to see Atomic Fire used on the final boss. So there you go. We just have to get past this trap, and there's still a little bit more to go. And we have this. You don't want to freeze these. Just, uh, just uh, when they start moving to the left, you start moving to the left, and you get past them pretty easily. Alright, so now we're at the final boss. They very helpfully give you an extra life in case you need to re uh, suicide in order to get all of your health back. Which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to let these saw blades... Uh, amusing how the most annoying enemy in the game is what he's shooting out at me. So the weakness of that little chin part is the atomic fire, and I'm just going to use uncharged shots. Just got to go right up to him and start shooting in a certain rhythm. No need to avoid the saw blades, really, because once you get past all of this, then you don't really need to worry about getting hit, because the pattern here is very, very simple. All you have to do is face him, use the mirror buster, and the little gun on the bottom will shoot at you and reflect the shot back into him. That leaves the only true danger is that claw, and I've already taken the one hit I'm allowed to take. If you run out of Mirror Buster against this guy, 
then you are unfortunately going to have to game over and start the stage all over again. There's enough Mirror Buster energy, fortunately, to fight this guy twice over, so there's that if nothing else. And I can only really die at this point to an accident avoiding the claw. You don't have to jump or anything, just avoid the claw by moving back, and then let the enemy fire the Mirror Buster into you, which will then get reflected back in him. Pretty boring final boss, but I suppose that's uh, the end of Mega Man, Dr. Wily's Revenge, Rockman World, or just Mega Man 1 on the Game Boy, whatever you want to call it. Dr. Wily has been defeated yet again. One wonders how we can go through so many of these robots before, like, running out of money and having to, I don't know, sell t-shirts or something. But the popcorn maker has been destroyed, but not before it makes a lot of popcorn. Popcorn explosions. Better than pizza explosions, am I right? Ah, <laughs> oh, these jokes that I'm making. So apparently we had a space shuttle and we're flying back to Earth now. I have no idea why the Game Boy games like sending you into space, but there you go. And now we're going to get that overly drawn out enemy roll. I honestly would have preferred a staff roll. I want to see who worked on this because as I said, this was outsourced to somebody else, so it would be nice to know who it was. Oh well. Chanky, that's what the fireball is called. Very strange. A cutting wheel. Well, I guess it is called the cutting wheel. I just called it a saw blade. A screwdriver with guns equipped. Yeah, it's nothing but the enemies. The Supercutter! All hail the Supercutter! More threatening than Cutman. And we have the Met All, not Metor, not Met Tool. Met All. All the Mets. The Gabio All, I guess. I don't even know. So, yeah, enough of my rambling about squirms. Ah, squirm, worm. Squirm. Good. Moles. Nice. So that's Mega Man 1 on the Game Boy. It was... it was pretty decent. It was pretty decent for a Game Boy game. Um... or a Game Boy Mega Man, rather. But I'm very glad that the company that worked on this came back for 3, 4, and 5 and improved on everything so much, culminating in 5 being a very, um... cult hit, if you want to call it that. All these games are cult hits. But Mega Man 5 in particular is well known for its original content, and hopefully I will get to that. Of course, before I get to Mega Man 5, I have to play through 3 and 4 first, I suppose. And uh, I don't have experience with those games, or at least not a whole lot of experience, so those will, be, those will be interesting to get through. And of course, I guess I have to play through Mega Man 2 on Game Boy as well, unfortunately. Mega Man 2 was made by a different developer than the rest of the Game Boy games, and it's really, really not as great as I would like to say it is. I mean, like, the, the music quality, the quality of the music in Mega Man 2 for Game Boy is very, very awful, and the stage design is not as good either, but if you play through it enough times, I think you could get some kind of, um affection for it like I have. I don't think it's a very good game, but, um, you know, the music is actually brand new, so it's not like a remix or anything. So that'll be interesting too, even though the sound quality is completely awful. The melodies, however, they are actually pretty good, which has made them the target of remixers. If the sound quality was better, then the music would be a lot better in Mega Man 2 for Game Boy, but we'll get to that. And, um, yeah, I suppose I have to play through Mega Man 2 on the Game Boy next, so we will get to that, and maybe I will explore some of the other Game Boy Mega Man outings, such as Mega Man Extreme, or, um, Extreme 2, I guess. There's really not a lot of Mega Man on the Game Boy compared to the consoles. I guess they weren't, uh, doing as well, but yeah. Still some very interesting things to look at on the Game Boy iterations of Mega Man, so it'll be nice to check all of that out. And until then, I will see you later for that. We have returned to Earth, apparently. And yeah, that's Mega Man 1 for the Game Boy. I'm Efren225, and I'm dreading having to do Mega Man 2 on Game Boy. 
Oh, my ears are going to bleed, but I suppose yours will too if you listen to it, so, uh, see you then.